And slowly down. So here is the first stage of the arm going on to the suction activator. That's correct. It's what we see on site and it's what does the real work. Yep. Um, and, and that's why suction activation is so important in the industry, making sure we've got the power, but obviously the reach and to enable us to get on site, isn't it? That's correct. I mean, MTS offer three or four different arms. This is what we would class as our standard and mega power booms. We offer Evo booms as well. And for people who want to go back in time, we occasionally do floppy arms as well. But this is a hose boom carrier. It's the important bit for actually positioning the suction nozzle exactly where the operator wants to remove material. Fantastic. So they're working on this right now. And then we'll see another unit when this looks a little bit more finished. Come on, Frank. Yeah. So Frank, what have we got up here? Uh, it's a view you don't often see of a suction excavator. This is the inside of the tank itself, which is broken down into three areas. One, you've got the heavy hopper, which collects the large materials, probably 95% of the materials sucked up. You then have the fines chamber, which probably takes your filtration down to about 96, 97%, catching the fine particles and grab, uh, grits, etc. And then eventually it goes through the multi 42 uh, washable polymer filters, effectively meaning the air that comes in to the system and deposits the material is actually cleaner when it's moved through the system and gone back out to atmosphere. So folks, even though this is a suction excavator, we still need hydraulic power. And Frank, this is where the hydraulic system's going in, isn't it? It is, that's, that's correct. This is the front hydraulic block. Uh, we have one at the rear, which runs the arm, etc. This controls all of the hydraulic functions. Yeah. Uh, they're all solenoid controlled and pressure set. Uh, we also use, uh, for each individual movement of the machine, uh, there is an electronic uh, pressure sensor so that you can't over go past the point. Uh, everything's automatically computer controlled. And this, folks, we've seen the heart, which is actually the fan system. But this, folks, is the blood of the machine, isn't it, Frank? It is, that's correct, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So now we can see inside the lid, folks. Remember, that was on the floor before. And, Frank, what's really interesting about this is actually we've got chains here. Why would you have chains in there? And we've got, like, armour sections. Why is all that happening? Uh, really, the chains are there to help decelerate the, the air, which is moving it anything up to 300 miles an hour as it enters the tank. So you want it to decelerate quickly so that it deposits the heavy materials. Uh, the armor plated sections, deflector plates, etc. they're there to protect the tank. Because if you're pulling aggressive materials, hard cores, ballast in the rail industry, if you don't have this, you're going to wear through the side and the top of your tank very, very quickly. So the chains themselves are a consumable. You may have to change them depending on ground once a year, once every 18 months. But you must always keep an eye on them. If they're worn out, they're not doing their job. This, folks, is almost like the tracks of an excavator, isn't it, really? It is. That's it's doing a lot of hard and heavy work. It is. Look after them, they'll look after you. So, folks, it literally, follow me here. At the top, we've got the hole right there. It goes in here, comes slap bang into that one. Then it basically allows us to drop down, because remember, this is a lid like this, drops down into those separate sections yeah. that Frank talked about earlier, then gets all of the filtration of the material, the heavy stuff, the particles, and comes out even better than it went in, didn't it? It is, yeah. But wait, folks, there's another addition, Frank, in this one, rather than the chains and everything we saw in the previous one. What's this? This is the multi-jet, multi-nozzle filter cleaning system. Fully automatic, uh, every 15 to 20 seconds, a bank of these, filter, of these jets will backblast the filters to make sure that they're maintained in optimum performance. So you've got the best possible airflow throughout its suction through the day. And this section under here is where the finer particles go, folks. Remember that as well. It is, that's correct. Fantastic. Uh, we talked about fans earlier, yep. and we had a triple fan, but yep. then you said there's an orange one, Peter, and this is the orange one. What is that run from? Well, the orange one is the Power Plus. And basically what it means, it's a slightly stronger 900 millimeter twin fan system, but it revs faster. And because it revs faster, it gives you more suction. It gives you more depression. So you'd use this when you've got extreme depth and distance is what's required. Uh, 
so when we see this again, automatic lubrication system, really important. It is, it is. In the old days, uh, before these, the guys would have to lubricate every single bearing every day. In the nature of the beast says that's not going to happen. Yep. So for the last 15 years, we put on fully automated auto lube systems to ensure bearings last a long time. Now, if you really are clever and you notice something, there's a little bit of a tilt here, Frank with the way this is put in that's correct why is that it's to ensure that the final carden shaft a prop shaft that drives from the top of the omsi to the pulleys for the fan system they're angled at the same angle to get less wear and tear so a big fan here but we've also got something here which is equally important it as is. well Frank, this isn't is it? the hydraulic cooling system three fans two of them are for the compressor system for the air that's going at the back for the air tools and one of them is for the main hydraulic system which controls the arms uh, the lifting the opening of the lid and the tipping mechanisms but folks if you come just over here with me we have another door frank yes so inside this door we haven't got anything however we're just going to show you something in the next bay which is a little bit of a surprise that i didn't know so follow us round there. So here is the big reveal, folks. It's a huge compressor, but this is also a different rig. This is the American rig, and they've got an enormous compressor on it. Why do you need a compressor when you've got all of the suction elements in the fans anyway? By using the larger compressor, in the American market in particular, they're competing against wet excavation systems, high pressure water jets to right. enable them to break up the ground, the hard clays, etc. See in Southern California, they've gone for a larger compressor. Double the capacity and airflow of our standard range of compressors. On an upside, apart from the extra power, this breaks the ground up more efficiently. So you should be able to remove it with suction at much lower fan rates. So in other words, this is really blasting it out there. It and is. so therefore smaller particulates, therefore sucked up easier. So that is, again, it's another scenario where you think about what ground have I got to deal with here? Where am I in the world? Yep. How is the, that particular site looking? You know, have we got a site like you say with that tough ground, but or have we got a clay sort of clodded site? Yes. Um, and that's the, the element around suction excavation what are the extra tools you might need to carry with you like this one folks yeah 